Welcome to The Bottom Line, Maximizing Small Business Profits. So I'm going to introduce a series titled QuickBooks and Fixed Assets. Now one of the most overlooked features inside of QuickBooks is the ability to manage assets. Now you understand from basic accounting, assets are all those things that the business owns. So there are current assets as well as fixed assets. So current assets are all of those assets that are going to have, you know, balances and may be disposed of between one year or less. So for example, for a current asset, if you look at accounts such as cash or supplies or accounts receivable, that balance is not going to be the same today as it will be next year. Now there are fixed assets. So the fixed assets consist of property, plant, equipment, buildings, things of that nature. So the fixed assets are the physical assets who when you purchase these assets, you may have these assets for three or more years. So the fixed inside of the fixed asset really means what you pay for the asset is going to be the book the face value and the market value of the asset and over time that asset is going to depreciate so depreciation represents the deduction reduction rather and the value of the asset which will give you the book value now this little bit of knowledge is important to know because the IRS offers what's known as a section 179 deduction so before I go into how to establish the fixed assets inside of QuickBooks I just want to give you an overview of the section 179 deduction and you can see here at the uh, top I have the website so when we take a look at the section 179 deduction Basically, what this is saying is that for 2017, the deduction limit is 500000 So this deduction is good on used equipment as well as off-the-shelf software. To take the deduction for tax year 2017, the equipment must be financed and put into service between January 1st, 2017 and the end of the day. Basically, to take this deduction for this uh, uh, for 2017, you must purchase new or used equipment between January 1st and the end of the day on December 31st. Now, what I want to focus on also here is this 2017 cap on equipment purchases, which is C is A. So this is the maximum amount that can be spent on equipment before section 179 option available to your company begins to be reduced on a dollar for dollar basis because larger businesses that spend more than 2.5 million dollars on equipment won't get the deduction so you have to understand that for this deduction that the maximum on the equipment purchases are two million dollars so if you purchase um, equipment fixed assets for two million dollars or less basically what this is saying is you um, are eligible for the section uh, 179 deduction, but then you only get to reduce 500,000, okay? Now, based what prompts me to wanna to talk about the section 179 deduction, just to get a little bit more insight on it, is the fact that a lot of times, the reason why this deduction, or well, at least in my experience with working with small businesses, the reason why this deduction is often, often overlooked is the fact that, you know, businesses don't, small businesses really don't keep track of assets. A lot of times they don't. So this deduction is missed, or if the deduction is recognized, they're not really getting the full amount of the deduction simply because you know they don't know which asset to purchase for the most part so QuickBooks allows you to once you purchase an asset you can keep track of that asset and in the QuickBooks accountant version the QuickBooks premier accountant version there's a actual fixed asset manager which calculates the depreciation 
um, in the fixed asset manager and post that depreciation amount in QuickBooks. And there's all types of tax reports that can be ran in for depreciation. So section 179 is a legitimate deduction because it allows a small business owner to deduct depreciation expenses. Now, the reason why I like to, I wanted to reference this website is because this website gives a breakdown calculation. Basically, in, if in 2017 you purchased six percent, okay, the first year write-off basically can accrue five hundred thousand dollars. You know, as this says right here, that this is the 2017 uh, deduction limit. But then there's also a 50% bonus for first year depreciation. So we see that the normal first year depreciation could be uh, 15,000 if you, you know, I don't decide to take the full depreciation amount. The normal depreciation could be 590,000, which could save cash savings from taxes for 206,500. So we can see Depreciation matters when you know preparing your taxes because every little depreciation number that the asset yields is very helpful in depreciation. Now, to get the deduction and to properly account for the deduction, two things must happen. First, every major asset that's purchased, okay? Number two, once those assets are maintained, depreciation needs to be uh, figured out so you could see what the overall, uh, get an idea of what the overall depreciation is going to be. So the whole purpose of QuickBooks Asset Manager is to keep track of your assets. So when it's time to figure out your depreciation, and take advantage of section 179, you have very, the asset, the account that is linked to, the length, and also to purchase on it. So all of that information would serve as proof for your section 179 deduction. Now also, if you were to look at the Schedule C, which the profit and loss for us, um, this, uh, like I said, this, this the purpose of this channel is focused on small business. If we see line 13, there is a section on Schedule C for depreciation and section 179 expense deduction. Now, in my next video, I'm going to be showing you this uh, form for taxes and kind of equate that to QuickBooks. So when, we, when I show you how to set up all these assets inside of QuickBooks, you can see how everything is being um, matched up with QuickBooks. But... This Schedule C has a section for Section 179. So as you can see, this is a deductible expense, which could basically lower your tax liability. That's the whole purpose of it. So the Section 179 is a legitimate deduction, of course, because it's published by the IRS, but it's greatly overlooked for the simple fact that assets are not managed properly by some small businesses. So the purpose of this series is to introduce you to the Section 179, but show you how to do the Section 179 um, asset management, um, asset management ma maintenance inside of QuickBooks, which will back into all of your Section 179 depreciation uh, deduction that you're qualifying. Now, who qualifies for Section 179? As you can see, all businesses that purchase, finance, and or lease less than $2,000 in new or used business equipment during tax year 2017 should qualify for the Section 179 deduction. So there you have it, folks. Now, most CPEs uh, would say, that anything over uh, $1,000 would qualify as uh, capital equipment or Section 179 equipment. Um, that could, you know, that's a gray area of mine. I mean, it could be anything over 500, you know. But the bottom line is you want to make sure that you are recording every 
bit of asset that's purchased so you can take advantage of section 179 depreciation so that concludes the first video um, in this series quickbooks and fixed asset management i just wanted to give everyone an overview of what section 179 is so in the next video i'm going to show you how to start to enter assets into quickbooks um, using the quickbooks uh, pro desktop version because that's pretty popular but then i'm also going to uh, show you how everything relates with the section 179 depreciation on the schedule c form so please feel free to leave comments or questions share the video this is good knowledge and also become a subscriber for future videos and i look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you